Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girl Snip Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dami, also known as Dami's Doodles. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Thursday, the 8th of August, 2019, and this is episode 357. We'd like to say a big welcome back. Oh. We love you guys to all our returning viewers and a big hiya to the new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Um, Dami, somebody introduced themselves this week. Would you do a shout out? Yes, Barb, who is Babs Knits from Pennsylvania. Welcome, Barb. Thanks for introducing yourself. Hope you enjoy the show. If somebody's not a member of our Ravelry group, what should they do and why? Join and introduce yourself in our introductions thread because you'll get a shout out on our next episode and be able to participate in all our owls and giveaways. Okay, so we have Pink Pearl over here today because we wanted to talk to you about her. Um, because after we released the podcast last week, um, she has had two more seizures since. Um, we started her on medication. Um, and then after, after the sec, yes, after the second one, we started her on medication. And then after the third one, they increased her medication and she hasn't had another one since, but, um, the doctor has witnessed the first two. And then I was home by myself with her when she had the third and it was terrifying. Um, I'm not crying now, just thinking of it. It, it was, it was, it was rough, wasn't it, love? The medicine makes her super, super sleepy and a little bit unsteady on her feet. We're hoping that her body will kind of adjust to it so that she's not sleeping all the time. But she gives good cuddles <laughs> oh, when she's so sleepy. You want to say hi? Oh, <laughs> that was a hello. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we're just gonna sit in my lap. Sit her up. There we go. Okay, yeah. there you go. They can't see her. <laughs> um, so we want to say a humongous thank you to everyone who reached out with kind words and good wishes and prayers and support, um, and also thank you to everyone who bought. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put you back on the ottoman when we're done. For just a minute. Um, thank you, especially to everyone who bought patterns and ebooks on Ravelry and who um, ordered physical books from us, and also people that just wanted to make a donation for Pinky. Um, we raised enough to cover her vet bill, all her tests, and her first almost two months of medication. Um, so anything further that comes in, we will um, just use to, to get. The next round of medication so um but i'm gonna we had said we were gonna leave the 25 percent off code up till the 16th so we're just gonna leave that live um in case anybody else wants to use it so but thank you so much for your support thank you for loving our pink pearl as um probably almost as much as we do um yeah she's such a sweet girl and we're just it's been a scary couple weeks. So, um, yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to get her put down and not, we're going to put her down so that she, we can do the podcast. Set her down. We're going to set her down. So she can take a nap. Yes. And so that we can podcast. Okay. Say bye bye, Pinky. All right. Here we go. Now we're going to talk about what is on our needles. What's on your needles, Dammy? So I'm currently working on my Persephone wrap for my Hades Town inspired collection. Oh yeah, I stopped in the middle of the row. Um, it's on US 64 millimeter needles and the yarn is Wild Happy Color Authentic Base in the Dammy's Muse colorway. Yeah, you had you you had to stop though last night at knitting group because there, I made a mistake. There was a typo when she was setting it up on when she typed it up, mm -hmm. and so she needs I have to, to look at it now. She has to correct it and and get it back on track. Okay, let me show you what's on my needles. So first up, I'm knitting anniversary socks for the Doctor Hubs. We'll be celebrating our twenty second anniversary next month. So um, this is my French Vanilla Cappuccino sock pattern. Um, it's on US one and a half, two and a half mil needles. And I'm, the yarn I'm using, I've just barely started with the Croy here. This is Patton's Croy um, in the blue striped rag colorway. 
And then this is Pandia's Jewels hand dyed tweed, and I don't know the name of that colorway. But um, so I'm going to use this as the toe heel and cuff, and then I will use this striping for the rest of it. Um, so I got those started. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you, I think I mentioned it a couple weeks ago, um, but I posted a picture of my Supernatural tote bag, Dean, Sam, uh, because it was the only bag I had that was big enough to hold this, all the yarn. Uh, okay, and I posted just the project, the project bag on Instagram, well, social media, because this is a surprise for the Dr. Hubs. Um, which means I can only knit on it when he's not home. And I'm going to try to get it finished by um, the end of Stash Dash. So it's a little bit crazy working on it. But what I'm doing is this is going to be um, a stole that uh, I'm going to give to Russ for when he is ordained uh, with uh, the church that we're, the denomination that we are now a part of. And... Um, I took this idea from the Tempestry Project, which is um, a project by Emily McNeil as well as some other people. And what they do, let me show you. So on their website, you can buy pre-made kits if you want to, or you can make your own. But they show you what, how to um, download the high temperature data from a particular location at a particular year. And so what I did is I pulled the data from Edinburgh Royal Botanic Gardens starting on June the 15th of 2016 and ending on Ju uh, June the 14th of 2017, which is the day that the Dr. Hubs defended his dissertation. So, um, and then what it does is I, it assigns the color and then it tells you how much yarn you need to buy. I bought double the amount because instead of doing just one row for each day, I'm doing a garter ridge for each day. But then they have, they've assigned the, all of this is free on their website, all these files that I'm showing you. Uh, they've assigned different colors for different temperatures. Now see, they, they have temperatures below 30 to above 121 all Fahrenheit. Um, but Edinburgh, we're only going to get tranquil, which is 31 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit to orange 76 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, I bought all the yarn and it's all in this bag. They used, um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted and I had to buy, I think, 10 colors and this is the first 60 days. So... The green is the lightest at this point, and the darkest is, um, I think this is the orange colorway right here. Um, so, but I am, if there's several, like, days where, well, like right here, where I was, where it was, like, doing one or two garter ridges and then another one, I just carried the yarn up the back. But otherwise, I am cutting the yarn and weaving it in as I knit it. Um, so, but I was able to get 60 days done just in two days knitting. So, it's a really fast knit. Um, they designed the pattern to be like a wall hanging. But um, I am, I'm doing it this way, and I really am loving it, and I hope he loves it. And... If I keep doing one month a day on the weekdays, I will have it finished by the end of Stash Dash. Nice. Which means I might reach my Stash Dash stretch goal. Nice. So we shall see what happens. So there's that. So those are my only two knitting projects right now. Oh, we didn't get it out. So the English paper piecing that I had been working on that had the uh, green fabric with the pink stars on it on the inside and the yellow fabric with the orange and green flowers on it on the outside, I finished that one. And so I bought one of those like long and wide but kind of not very deep Rubbermaid tubs and it 
goes under our coffee table and as I finish the flowers I set them in there um, so that makes six that I have finished and if my math is correct I will need 42 square uh, flowers to make the quilt the size that I want to make it so um, and it's 19 hexagons in a flower and on the first day I always do two hexagons so that I can go ahead and stitch them together so it's taking 18 days per flower so a couple of years which is fine and then I have to sew all the flowers together and then have a friend help me uh, quilt it but I, so I started on my next um, flower, so it's got the gray middle, and the inside is going to be this Belle Beauty and the Beast fabric, and the outside is going to be this pink sparkly fabric, which um, the pink sparkly and the Beauty and the Beast is the fabric that I bought um, when my friend Mary did a project bag for me. Um, so that's the leftovers from it so i will do one like that and then i'll do one where it's the pink glitter on the inside and the bell on the outside and um yeah so i'm it makes me feel better knowing like how many approximately i'm gonna need um because i was like i have no clue how many of these i'm gonna need and i'm so glad that i increased the um size of them so i'm using i think the two inch hexagons because the one inch ones would have taken 50 gazillion um of them and then the other thing that i am working on is my cross stitch project stay tender by june bug and darlin so this is what i have finished thus far so i'm having a debate because I bought a, um, it's a plastic hoop, but it's a silver plastic hoop to put this in to display. And the way the pattern is designed, she like gives you like where your hoop might end. And so you just knit the poppy up to where the hoop is. And so there's partial poppies on it, but I don't know if I want partial poppies. So I'm debating maybe finishing this one and doing another small one here and then doing a big one here and a couple of small ones and letting that be it. What's your thoughts? Yeah, what do y'all think? Um, I can, let me show you again. So you can see like the outline of the circle. So like this poppy is cut off like all around there. So um, yeah, what are y'all's thoughts? What do you think? Um, yeah. But I'm working on that and loving it. And that is everything that is currently on my needles of all kinds. Um, so I think we're ready for me to show you my parade of FOs. And now we're going to talk about her finished projects, four of them. Four of them. Okay, so the first one I'm not going to show you completely because it's a new design. Um, but I did finish the sample this week. This is my, I'll have two coffees and two cherry danishes to go please socks. Gilmore Girls reference. It's on US one and a half, two and a half mil needles. And the yarn is, it's all about you, Fidalgo self striping sock in the Cherry Blossoms version 2.0 colorway. And, um, I just sent this out to testers yesterday. So they are working on it. It's a very simple pattern. You will have it memorized almost immediately, but it's just something else that you can do with self-striping yarn. Um, because sometimes it, sometimes you just want to spice up self-striping yarn, but it can be hard to figure out a pattern that actually works with it. So I'm really pleased about this and um, I'm excited to see my testers as they are knitting it up. I'm thinking that it's probably going to be a mid-September-ish release. Sure. Yeah, or I could save it and make it a birthday release. Beginning of October. I'm thinking on that. Well, well I'll get it to y'all as soon as I figure it out. 
Okay, then I have my preemie hat for this week. This is number 31 for the year. This is my free top-down preemie hat pattern that you can find on Ravelry. It's on US 6's 4 mil needles, and the purple yarn is Lion Brand Vanish Choice in the dusty purple colorway, and the variegated is Big Twist Yarn Sincerely Ombres in the Cupcake Confetti colorway. I think I have enough to make the part of the purple to make one more hat. Mm -hmm. And then that'll be all of my hats for Click for Babies. And then I'll go back to knitting just the, the traditional uh, preemie hats to donate to NICUs. So, and then I finished my happy sixth birthday Waylon slippers. These are for my nephew Waylon. It's more of an orangey salmon in person. The, the camera is not picking it up very well. This is the um, bed peds pattern by Yvonne Mendelson. I converted it to be toe up though. And it's on US 5's 3.75 mil and US 7's 4.5 mil. And the yarn is Vitalana Ambient Worsted in the Dawn Blush colorway and Red Heart Soft in the Light Gray Heather colorway. So now I have finished all three pairs for uh, my niece and nephews for their birthdays. So Waylands are like this. Wyatt's are exactly the same except for they have the gray rolled cuff. And then Lola's are that really vibrant fuchsia pink with with uh, sparkle mm -hmm. in them. And I think I did the rolled cuff on hers as well. So um, they'll be able to tell them apart. I need to knit a pair for me because I really do love them a lot. And then my big finish this week, and forgive me not for not putting it on, if we've been having a... Heat wave. heat wave, a tropical heat wave. The temperature's rising. It, it isn't, isn't surprising. surprising. You certainly can. She certainly can. can, can, can. can, can. This is my summer top, which is the pattern by Ong Streak. I did this on US 3's 3.25 mil and US 4's 3.5 mil. And the yarn is Plymouth Yarn Lanaza Hand Dyed in the mauve pink orange colorway. I could have actually made this about. I think maybe six to eight rows longer, but I didn't know that. I love how this yarn pooled. And it's got a really nice detail on the rib. You do some slip stitches with that. And it's got the super short um, sleeves. But I love it. It's really long, which is what I wanted. Um, it's a, like a tunic length. And even though it's called a summer top, I'm gonna have to wait for it to get a smidge cooler. Well, I'm, mm, I don't know what the weather's doing. It can't decide uh, before I wear it, but I really, really love it. And it was a huge boost to my stash dash. So my stash now, blah, 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 blah. my stash dash, which is a, um, a long hosted by the Knit Girls podcast. Um, I'm currently sitting at 13,703.9 meters completed. So to reach my 15,000 stretch goal, I need 1,296.1 meters. If I finish the stole for the Dr. Hubs and his socks, and I think I have two or three more preemie hats, I might reach it. But I, I'm feeling pretty confident about the, the stole um, because, um, because of how good I've been doing on it already. And uh, since I can't work on it when he's home, that means this weekend when he's home, I'll be working on his socks. So um, other than cross stitch and um, English paper piecing. So there's a good chance I might reach it, which would be amazing. So um, yeah. And that is everything that I have finished this week. Um, yeah, I'll get some modeled pictures of this up soon. Um, it's supposed to be cooler this weekend, so maybe you can help me take pictures on Sunday or something. Sure. So, I think we're ready to move on to the 50 gazillion yummies that we need to talk to you about. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. Yummies. What are yummies, Dammy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. Oh, that's how she's supposed to Do you want to do that first? Or you want to wait till I do mine? <laughs> okay. So I am, since I'm nearing completion on my um, Stay Tender cross stitch, I ordered the next project that I'm going to do. So this is a pattern by Silver Creek Samplers. It's called My Christmas List. 
it's 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 long it's a pretty long one so I know you can't read all that so I will read it to you it oh. says family visits turkey dressing woolen sweaters Christmas blessing flying reindeer mistletoe candles glowing hot cocoa pies and cookies old st. Nick peace and goodwill peppermint stick wrapping presents gingerbread hang your stocking time for bed angel singing Christ is born a gift for all on Christmas morn and then it's got different things like the car with the tree and the turkey mistletoe etc so I ordered this from 123 stitch and I also ordered some tea dyed Monaco fabric to uh, cross stitch this on I've never cross stitched on anything except for Ada um, so I'm excited to try the Monaco um, and see what I think of it. Um, the next thing that we got is my friend Sarah. Her daughter is an artist and she um, was selling some things that she had drawn as well as some stickers um, in their town a few weeks ago and she posted about Sarah posted about them online and I was like you know I need that. So we got these in the mail. So and Ainsley drew us a little thank you note. She really thought it was really cool that we have a cat named Pink Pearl. So we, I got Dammy and I each a pink cat sticker, and then um, they sent an extra pink cat and a fox to use as part of giveaway stuff. So these will be coming up um, at some point in the future as part of a giveaway so stay tuned for that so thank you to Ainsley and and Sarah for sending those okay so I told y'all last week that I have been binge watching the back catalog of Priscilla and Chelsea the real housewives of cross stitch their floss tube on YouTube and Priscilla finishes their projects just so beautifully that was one thing that um when I used to do cross stitch, I I would put them in frames, which is fine. But I was always like, I wish there was another way to display them as well. Well, after seeing what they do, I was inspired to finish finish my bollocks cross stitch that I had finished stitching a while back, but it had just been sitting on the shelf. So this is what I did. So I got this black wooden sign at Joann's. And then I got a piece of, um, it's like felt, but it's sticky on one side. And I put that on the back of the stitching and then folded the corners over like a gift. You can tell this is my first one. It's not exactly straight, but I don't care. And then um, I did the corners using hot glue. And then I hot glued the whole thing on here. And then I had bought this um, floral. Um, floral floral it's called floral ribbon floral it's like florist ribbon oh. is I think is what it's called it has wires in the top and bottom so I made it was on clearance and I so I bought it and made this bow and then just glued a black button and put it all on there and I think it is just fabulous I love it and I'm gonna hang it up on the wall after we finish recording I only didn't hang it up because I wanted to show y'all so for what like and I have a ton of this ribbon left for under $10, and that's pushing it. Um, I was able to finish this this way. The most expensive thing was the, the wooden sign. Um, but I really, really love it. So there's that. And then last night at Knitting Group, our friend Sally, she was like, Cece, I saw this and I had to get it for you. Are you guys ready for this? Cat Lady Embroidery, 380 Ways to Stitch a Cat. And they show doing it on um, fabric that is like um, cotton, linen, felt, or wool. And it's, um, it, it's more like, count. It, it, they're not, I don't know what I'm trying to say. So, like, the images are, like, done like this, so there's not, like, a chart to do them, but it's, so, but it's not exactly counted cross-stitch, but then also back here, let's see, 
So that was the actual image, but then further back it shows you like how you need to stitch it and colors and everything um, to do it. So I might be able to do this using like Ada or something like that on it. But. Heads and butts. Which one's pink butt? Stopped button. There's all kinds of different things in here. All uh, kinds of butts. I really like the. I love this alphabet. And where was that? Looks like you should have bookmarked pages. This one. I love that whole page. So, um, yeah. So this was really fun. And bye-bye. So, um, yeah. So this is so fun. I was like squealing with delight looking through it last night at Knitting Group. So um, I might see if I can do something from it. And then Dammy also got me a present. How adorable is this little Winnie the Pooh? It, these are Funko Minis. They are minis. When I looked it up on Amazon. Um, trying to open the box. Come out, come bear, come out. I should have done this before we recorded. If you don't know, I'm a huge fan of Winnie the Pooh. But you got you a set as well. Mm -hmm. We friends. So Dan got the Ariel and Flounder one. They, um, I was hoping they would have the Eeyore one in stock because the Dr. Hubs loves Eeyore, but they didn't have him in stock at Barnes and Noble last night when we were there. Are you going to display it in the box? I don't know. I haven't decided. It has a really cute uh, Hundred Acre Wood background inside. They do make an Eeyore. They just didn't have it. Have him at the store last night. They also had other Little Mermaid ones. They had Ursula mm -hmm. with Flotsam and Jetsam and... Human Ariel. Yes, with the pink dress with Sebastian. And a fork. He's not in there properly. I'm sorry. I will let Dammy fix that. Was there anything else? I'm to get broken? No. Is there anything else I'm supposed to show in Yummies? His butt is stuck. Okay, why don't we wait because it's making a loud noise. No. <laughs> Nothing else. Okay, then let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. What is it, Dammy? It stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo a Day Challenge. We have a list of photo prompts for each month. So you take a look at the prompt for that day, take a picture related to it, and post it anywhere you like. But we pick our favorites from Instagram. That's right. And this month's theme is just like celebration and such around... Um, our upcoming seventh anniversary at the end of the month, as well as some other knitting stuff and numbers and colors and such like that. So, what are we about to show them, Dammy? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos. Great job, everybody. So it's never too late to join in. You take a look at the prompt for the day. For example, today, Thursday, the 8th when we're recording this, the, the prompt is the number 8. You can interpret that however you want. We're very cheater-friendly on that. Post your picture on Instagram. Make sure in the caption you use hashtag GGKCraftyPad. In addition, you can use hashtag GGKKittyPad, hashtag GGKPuppyPad, hashtag GGKPuggyPad, and hashtag GGK birdie pad and yours might get chosen uh, make sure you use the hashtag because that's how we find your photos if you have a private account on Instagram and you're participating in GGK crafty pad you need to make sure that Dammy Dammy's doodles 
uh, is following you because otherwise we can't see your photos. So send her a message so you can make sure that she's following you and yours might get chosen. Okay, upcoming events. Uh, the Fall Pacific Northwest Yarn Crawl is the first weekend in October. Fiber Fusion Northwest at Evergreen State Fairgrounds in Monroe, Washington is the third weekend of October. And I'm going to a one-day knitting retreat in November. That's all the events for the moment. So I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. Now we're going to talk about what we are reading, watching, and listening to. What are you reading, Dammy? So I'm still going through Much Ado About Nothing by Shakespeare. I'm just rereading it a little at a time. So I'm also reading The Glass Scientist, which is a webcomic by Sabrina Catungo. And I assume you're getting your 15 minutes a day in? Yes, reading my pattern, too. Okay. Uh, what am I referring to? The July, August, September Ral Read Along. So this is a challenge for you to read 15 minutes a day, every day. I don't care what you read, as long as you're reading. Uh, audiobooks do count. There's a finish line thread in our Ravelry group for the seasonal um, read-along, as well as we're doing a year-long challenge that you earn entries into by doing the seasonal Ravels. And beginning of next year, we will draw for three grand prize winners um, from all the entries that are entered into the year-long challenge. All the details are in the Ravelry group and in the show notes. I'm scrolling so that I can see the next thing on my list. Um, yeah, so keep on reading. Okay, what I'm reading. I have way too many books going at the same time. I'm reading Hello Mornings, How to Build a Grace-Filled Life-Giving Morning Routine by Kat Lee. I think I have like three chapters maybe left in that, but I've kind of set it aside for a minute because I'm reading... So you want to talk about race by, how did you say to say it? Oh, um, where is it? Right there. Oh, I would think it's Ayoma Aluo. She's from Seattle. Um, and the reason I set Hello Mornings aside is because so you want to talk about race is one that there's a lot of holds on. So if I don't finish it, I'll have to like go back on the hold list and wait a while. Whereas Hello Mornings, I think I'm the only I don't think there's any holds on it, so, uh, or if there is, it won't be very long before I can get it back, so that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm also rereading Liturgy of the Ordinary Sacred Practices in Everyday Life by Tish Harrison Warren. Uh, there's a group of us at church that are doing a book discussion group around that book. Um, I'm still rereading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the fourth book by J.K. Rowling, um, along with Harry Potter and the Sacred Text podcast and Swish and Flick and All Potter podcast. Um, so Swish and Flick did their second half of the Pinsieve chapter this week. And so now I'm ready to move on to the next one, next chapter. I can't remember what the next chapter's title is, though. I'll have to look. So I will do that for this next week. I'm also rereading The Fiery Cross, which is the fifth book in the Outlander series by Diana Galden. Uh, rereading that to be inspired for my fifth Outlander-inspired uh, pattern that will be coming out uh, around the time of the season five of the TV show. I finished reading Force of Nature, which is the second book in the Aaron Falk series by Jane Harper. I read Only One Life by Ashley Farley. It was... There was a lot of a kind of like a romance kind of story to it, but uh, there, but it was also just a very interesting look at um, people scraping by and trying to make ends meet when something tragic happens, and then what do they do when they can't pay the bills anymore, and and also looking at like the interactions between our family of origin um, and and those kind of relationships and such. It's a fiction book, but it was I really enjoyed reading it. And then last night, I just finished, just before I went to sleep, A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which is the first book in the Curse Breaker series by Bridget Kimmerer. And 
It is a twist on the Beauty and the Beast story. And I knew there was a second book in the series. And so I finished this first one last night. And I was like, okay, I want to get the second one to read. It doesn't come out till next year. I was like, no, I want to read the second one. But um, a heads up. I got it from the library to read, but when I was linking it up in the show notes uh, before we recorded, it is currently on sale on Amazon for $1.99 for the Kindle edition. Hmm. So I can't guarantee how long that price will last, but um, if you go to our show notes, geekygirlsknit.com, and look in the episode thread for this for this uh, week, there's all, it'll be linked up in there, uh, and it was $1.99 when, we, uh, when I did those show notes today. Okay, watching. I watched a couple of Hallmark movies this week. Love and Sunshine was the first one. And then I watched Aurora Tea Garden Mysteries, a game of cat and mouse. There was no cats or mice involved. Um, I finished watching seasons one and two of the Orville. Um, in the second season, it, it became much more of a sci-fi show versus... The first season was, was, it was science fiction, but there was a lot more comedy and a lot more of the kind of making fun of the genre. Uh, then, I mean, there's still some in the second season, but it's taken a, a much more kind of dramatic turn. Um, and it's already been renewed for a third season. So I'll have to wait for that. You want to talk about the next one? Um, sure. We finished series three of Victoria. Oh, I didn't put in our new thing. Oh, and we watched the first episode of Gentleman Jack. Yes. Um, and then the Dr. Hubs and I are watching series one of Father Brown. No, we finished series one of Father Brown, but I don't think we started the second one. So there's that. And then I'll let you talk. Um, we're watching season seven of Elementary. Is there only one more? Mm, where's my phone? Is there one or two more? Either way, um, Reichenbach killed Sherlock's father just because I was so upset um, why don't you just type in because it's right there because I just looked it up last week um, no there's two more episodes there's the, there's the one that's on tonight and one next week Okay. Reichenbach Falls is tonight and their last, last bow is next week and that will be the end. Um, okay. Um, and we watched the season six finale of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They went back in time to the 1930s, and they've got an LMD of Coulson now. And I was wondering if we would see Peggy, but probably not, since it's um, 1931. And when did you say that she was around? Late 30s to early, to late 30s, I think. To like, I think she was active through the seventies. You never know. It depends on how much time they spend in the past. So, and that one was a two-parter um, for the finale. And then I'm watching season two of Instinct, season five of Good Witch, season five of Pull Dark, and I watched the season six finale of The Hundred. Mm. And so they have had to have something happen for the next season to to take over the story because they wrapped up they wrapped up some of the stuff so and then listening to of course my favorite murder podcast the one that came out today was the number one episode as picked by fans um and then next week new episodes start back so and then as i mentioned earlier i'm watching the back catalog of priscilla and chelsea the real housewives of cross stitch podcast and they are enabling me much too much i want to cross stitch all the things okay what are you listening to um hades town and cabin pressure and sex yes all right i think that is everything so let's move on to the next segment and now we're going to talk about our june july august summertime and the living is easy ow so this Along started on the 1st of June and it runs through the 31st of August and it is for any project that you can knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us is related to summer. If you can't think of anything, you made it in the summer. 
There are a couple mean rules for this owl. The first is that no whips are allowed. Your project must have been begun no earlier than the 1st of June and finished no later than the 31st of August, unless you are knitting the My Favorite Murder Mystery Wrap, which you can enter as long as you finish it by the end of August. Yes. The second main rule is that each project of at least 20 yards that you finish and post in the FO thread counts as one entry, but if your project is not at least 20 yards, you need to group it in a single post with other projects that together total at least 20 yards. You can feel free to poly dip in other alongs as long as it fits in with those rules. That's totally fine. I was going to say, how many times can we say 20 in this podcast? <laughs> I got you off your track now. We have lots of lovely prizes on our screen right now. If you would like to get a closer look at them or see where they came from, you can go to our show notes at geekygirlsknit.com or tune into the first podcast of every month where we talk about them in detail. Yep. Thank you so much to everyone who donated prizes. And if you're interested in donating for a future owl, you can contact Java Pearl on Ravelry or email us at geekygirlsknit at gmail.com. You must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast group on Ravelry in order to participate. There's a hashtag if you would like to tag your projects or posts on social, social media. It is hashtag GGK Summertime 19. The FO thread is going to be the locked on the morning of the 1st of September, and winners will be drawn for the next podcast after that. And any winners will have 30 days to claim their prize, or they forfeit it. Speaking of winners, I have not heard from any of the stitch marker winners from last week. Oh, no. So, if you entered into the Stitch Marker giveaway, go watch last week's episode. I know it's summertime, and so people might be on vacation and such. So, that's why we give you 30 days to claim it. So, Sammy is playing with the back of my phone. It's got... It's, it, it's got water and sparkles in this one. I need one, but it makes the phone too big. I know, but I like it because it, I, it's easier for me to hold on to because I drop my phone a lot. There's a chatter thread on Ravelry if you would like to discuss the project progress of your projects. That's where I give shout outs to people who finish projects during a week, but I also do that here. So, Artsy Ravy, DG White, Philippa MC, Fun Friend, Knit Central, Knitter Chow, Lil Angeles G2, Mystery Sewer, Nicole S, Phoenix Fire, Smash Williams 94, Share 2014, and VT Kimmy Kim. Good job, everybody. Keep working on those projects. You have uh, 23 days-ish to finish them, and you might be a winner. All right, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we try to answer them. Yes, we're continuing on with the epic post of questions. From Denise, who is Fuzzy Kit, from Michigan. So what is this week's question, Dammy? CC and Dammy, have either of you ever thought of writing a fiction or biography book? I know, I know, completely random. Or have you ever written one of those style books? Or Dammy, how about a picture book? I see you like to draw and storytelling is a great offshoot of that. Again, random thoughts in my head. So, once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, once upon a time, I started writing a fiction book. I didn't make it very far. <laughs> um, what was it about? I don't even totally remember. It's been, I mean, like, you were little. It's probably been 16, 17 years ago. So, um... I wrote three books of patterns. Mm -hmm. And you wrote two books of patterns. We're on the Amazon. <laughs> um, what about a biography or autobiography? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if my life's that interesting. <laughs> um, maybe. I... I think if I were to write something, it would be more auto autobiographical in nature versus fiction. I love to read fiction, but I'm not good at writing it. Mm. Whereas, if it's something more autobiographical, I can, you know, it would be it would be easier for me to write. What about you? Uh... Have you ever thought about writing a book? Like when I was younger, but like, it takes a long time, and you have to flesh out all your characters. What about a picture? Please, book? your literary agents. What about a picture book like where you draw 
do like some of the illustrations because I know you love to draw. I haven't been, I haven't drawn in a while and I don't think my style would be conducive to making a full length picture book. You never know. There's all kinds of interesting ones out there. I just dropped my stitch marker. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Um, what about y'all? Why don't you, in the episode thread, tell us if you ever have thought of writing a book or maybe you have written one or more. Because I know we have at least one person in our group who has published several books. Um, so if, you, if you've written a book, tell us about it. If you haven't written a book but you've thought about it, tell us what you would write. Or if you've never thought of writing a book, you can tell us that too. Um, yeah, so I think we answered that question. Thanks again to Denise for all the questions that she's given us. Um, Dammy, if somebody has a question for us, what should they do? Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls Ravelry thread and post it. That's right. All right, on to the next segment. We made it to the end of the show. Today felt like it flew by quicker. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, so, again, the uh, sale that Pink Pearl is hosting um, is still going on. We have a few physical copies of all three of our books, Coffee with CC, Coffee with CC, and Dammy, and Tickle Pink Left. If you would like one of those, email us. Geek job. I didn't know you were going to say email us. Grande at javapearldesigns.com. Yes, um, with your mailing address and which books you want so I can figure out shipping and I'll send you uh, an invoice on PayPal. Um, or on Ravelry, all of our patterns and our ebooks are on sale uh, for 25% off using the co coupon code, all capital letters, Pink Pearl. P I N K P U R L. So, like the, the stitch. Um, and that is valid through next Friday the 16th at 11.59 p.m. Mm -hmm. That's an epic day for you. Ah. She's getting all of her wisdom teeth out. Um, and again, thank you so much to everybody who has supported our sweet baby. Who is currently, I wish I could show you. She's laying on the ottoman, which I also have my laptop um, propped on like the corner of it because we're reading the show notes off of it. But Dammy put her back on the ottoman and she laid down and she has her tail draped over my foot, which is very sweet. She's, she, she's become much more cuddly since she's been on the medicine because it just makes her so tired. Poor baby. But knock on wood, there won't be any more seizures. Please. Because, yeah. That's rough. Okay, um, I don't think we have any other announcements because we'll record as normal next week and it'll go live mm -hmm. before we leave for your surgery. So, um, so I think that's everything. So we'd like to say a humongous thank you. We love you guys so much to everybody who supports us and Pink Pearl and the podcast, however you do it. Um, you're all a part of this community and we're so grateful for each of you. But an especially big thank you to those of you who support us financially, because unfortunately it does cost money to do the podcast. Um, there are three main ways you can do that. The first is Patreon, which is a site where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives, and you earn rewards based on what level you donate at. I did Patreon rewards this week, earlier this week. So if you are expecting um, a reward, check your inbox or check your mail stuff has been sent out um dammy if somebody wants to know more about this or wants to sign up where do they go patreon.com slash geeky girls knit what's another way there's a paypal button in the sidebar of our website if you would like to make a one-time donation and we are amazon.com.co.uk and ca affiliates if you go to our website and look in the sidebar or at the bottom of the show notes um find your appropriate amazon to where you live uh, click on it and do your shopping as normal and Amazon gives us a little money back based on what you purchase It doesn't cost you anything extra and it's a great way to support the podcast by doing something you'd be doing anyway uh, especially with back-to-school shopping some people have already started back to school No Dammy still has like a month and a half at home. We're really glad about that so um, Okay 
Dammy, why don't you tell them where they can find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsknit.com. There are links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. I was looking for my needle minder. Um, yeah. Well, we hope you have a lovely rest of your week. Um, if it's really warm, tropical heat wave where you're living, make sure and stay cool and hydrated uh, because... You don't want to be dehydrated, especially in the heat. Um, and happy crafting. I love making things with my hands. So happy crafting to you. We hope you have a lovely rest of your week, and we'll talk to you again next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, here's the mouse. This mouse. Squeak, squeak. And put paw on. Oh, good job. Good job. Oh, okay. So we gotta get the show notes. They're over here. Okay, gotta get our arrow up there. Oops. Oops, we're missing it. Okay, here we go. Here's your show notes. And here's, oh, say, oh, Jack. Oh, oh, Mama finished lots of projects. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and look at all them yummies. Good helper. Good, good helper. Mm -hmm.